What upsets you? I, I hate when people would cough. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh. Mm. Uh, praying to God, taking time, just being alone, me and him. They say that your number one love language is something that you wished you would have gotten when you were a kid. That's what people say about your love language. And mine is not physical touch, cause my mom beat the. <laughs> it's not that. <laughs> Are we gonna count this time? Yeah, we're gonna count this time. Okay, right, ready? Ready? All right, three, two, one. Yeah! It's your boy Carl. It's your boy James. And welcome back to another episode of the Why Not Podcast, where we just talk about whatever the hell we want. Because why not? Why not? Why not? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, topic I wanted to talk about today was like, I was just thinking about this earlier. It was on the, what's like, what upsets you? Like, what is your pet peeves? If you have any. Oof, okay. What upsets me? Like, what makes me angry? Yeah, like, pet if someone did something to you or like any of those like categories. Or like, if there was something that you saw growing up and just within your life, if you saw it, you were like, oh. <laughs> 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 oh man um okay so one is um what is pretty funny i think it's stupid though but i hate when people cough <laughs> <coughs> i hate when people cough and it's like uh um, <coughs> like they cough with their tongue out you know cause it's, it's like, like that little kid cough yeah it's a little kid cough bro <coughs> Cause it's like, I feel like in order, like, like taking your tongue out, that's very extra, you know, <laughs> coughing out loud, like not in your arm oh, or in your shirt or something, something is already like, you know, it's, like, take me out to dinner first. Yeah, man. Like this is very intimate. <laughs> like if you're <clears throat> coughing like that, that's a, uh, don't do that. <laughs> you know, just don't. Like what, what happened? Like, when did you figure that out? No, I mean, it's just cause like, <laughs> I don't know, like. A, a, sometimes when you just see people in public, you know, like yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I like to whenever like you don't I'm in even public, know. yeah, you don't know these people. Yeah. <laughs> sometimes when you're in public and you're <laughs> guys, <laughs> <laughs> when you're just observing people, you know, people have the weirdest tendencies and the habits. And one of the habits that I've seen people do, which a good amount of people do, is <coughs> like they don't cover up <laughs> their mouth. I'm just like, I don't know. If this is just from not being like taught that, but I feel like that's not yeah. something that you have to teach. <laughs> like, bro, you're coughing. You cough. Like, we <clears throat> went through a whole pandemic <laughs> and you're still <coughs> like, <laughs> come on, you know? Like, yeah, have you ever seen that? Yeah, no. I have actually. Yeah, people, there's like a lot. I think I was in the mall this one time and I was just passing by the food court and stuff like that. But like, bro, like I understand it's your own food, bro. But it's just the fact that like you're doing this to take it out of you. Yeah. Right. So I saw this old guy. I don't know if he was old. He was like a 50 year old. He had a family with him, right? Okay. I was walking past the food court. You know, I'm just trying to eat my damn Sarku Japan. <laughs> my good chicken yeah. teriyaki. Oh, I'm, God, I'm, I'm, so I'm like so next good. to this guy, bro. I'm eating next to this guy. And I look at him, right? Because I noticed something that he's doing. I turn. Bro's literally coughing into his food, bro. And it's like, it's in front of his kids' food, too. He's just, <coughs> and his wife doesn't say anything. And I'm just like, you married this animal? You're just going to enable that? You're just going to, you're just going to. That's gonna, okay? Like, this is natural habitat? That's. Bro, like, it was bad. It was bad, like, because it was just like, <coughs> all over his food. And I was like, the whole point of you doing that is for you to, like, cough it out yeah. and get it out or like even cough it into your shirt <laughs> but bro this is something that you're just coughing back out to put it back in you know what I mean? recycle <laughs> reuse <laughs> reuse reduce and recycle <laughs> this costs so much money bro nah dude that would piss me off bro unless like listen if you're gonna if you're gonna cough in your food unless someone is trying to eat your food yeah and you want to claim that that's your property? <laughs> you do that? Sure, I cough just pull on that it. Shit, dude, you don't cough in your food. I mean, hey, if they're willing to still eat your food after you cough they're and stuff down. on it, then yeah, they're, they're down. Then they needed it. Like, what if I? <laughs> they needed <laughs> they, the nutrients. <laughs> I need your orange chicken. <laughs> <laughs> they needed it. Bro, <laughs> bro, they needed the nutrients. Bro, they needed the jump, bro. Like, just give it to them. Oh, my goodness. Okay, so you, I feel like, for me, it has to deal with driving. 
Okay. Because it's like given, right? I feel like I'm not the best driver, mm -hmm. but I know some type of like road etiquette. You yeah. know what I mean? So, first of all, Virginia is the worst place to drive. <laughs> I feel like and it's probably different for other states. Like probably some people will say like New York is the worst place to be like driving in or California or whatever, or even Florida. But or Texas, I'm just gonna call it all the states yeah, at this point. <laughs> but no, it's like, just something about Virginia drivers that piss me off. Like <laughs> it's some it's some of the tendencies that they do. So like one of them, right, mm -hmm. is um turn signals. I'm a big turn signals guy. Absolutely. Right. Because I could be breaking the rules and speeding right now, but then if I don't know that this guy on my right side is gonna turn his car into my lane. I'm just going to, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, just imagine if I went, and then this dude just went, Deep. I'm done. I'm done. Yeah. So it's like turn signals are a big thing. It's like Jasper and I uh, are starting to do this thing where, like, uh, we don't flick the person off. Mm, yeah, you just never do that. No, but we do thumbs down. We call oh. it thumbs down. So it's like, <laughs> it's like some dis... <laughs> exactly like that. It's like face disappointing face. parent face, you know what I mean? <laughs> Your parents taught you better. No, I don't. I don't agree. <laughs> I don't agree with your actions. <laughs> You're gonna get a referral. Yeah. Where do you go? <laughs> Where do you go right now? <laughs> no, no. That's... Pulls him over. Oh, <laughs> uh, sir. Oh, sir. You didn't use your turn signal. Where's your lights? <laughs> Nowhere. I'm writing you this. What's your badge <laughs> number? Uh, <laughs> screw you. <laughs> but yeah, no. Something about turn signals. Um, second is freaking um. What is it? The tunnel. Okay. So it's like, I know you come from like Richmond down to Virginia Beach all the time. So yeah. it's like, I don't know if you go through that tunnel. All the time. Yeah. So it's like, there's this thing that people do where um, I had to learn it too, right? Because I, I used to be a victim of it. But it's like, when I started to realize, I, I learned it pretty quick. But okay. it was the fact that like every time you get to the entrance of the tunnel, that's when people want to start slowing down. Because the speed limit in the tunnel is like 55 miles per hour. Less, so yeah. tell me why I'm going 20 in a 55 mile per hour like and there's no there's no accident at the end mm -hmm. the traffic clears out at the end yeah but it's just the fact that like people think that just because you were in a tunnel the road got smaller yeah when it did not <laughs> again there it this... just has walls <laughs> <laughs> you just fuck? can't drive recklessly <laughs> which is just driving normal <laughs> i'm so, just yeah. like why am I going 20 and a 55? <laughs> and then, so yeah, that pisses me off because every time you like try to go to work because I used to work over there at Newport News and you're trying to get home in a timely manner because you've been stuck at a place for like the past few hours, you just want to go home. I can't because there's like an hour delay. Yeah. Because the traffic constantly, like the traffic starts all the way back from where it's actually occurring. So it's like if, hap if it's happening at the bridge, it's happening... This exit can be like all the way out to like Hampton University. And it's like, why is this so far? Like, no. why does the traffic start here? <laughs> Has it been 30 minutes already, James? Ooh. There's no way that's been 30 oh, minutes. Oh, no, the card is full. It's okay. Card is in like. SD card. I have more cards. <laughs> I'm sure you have more cards. Yeah. Um. But you can uh, you can keep talking. Right now we're just uh, we're, we're we're playing a cat dancing. <laughs> we're playing the cat dancing. Yeah, we're just, while we're doing this. Yeah, while, so while you're talking, there'll just be a cat dancing. <laughs> you know, so continue. No, but that's what I'm trying to say though is that they just think that the they just think that the road is getting smaller and it just causes so much more traffic and driving slow like that can cause accidents. So it's like it's bad. It's uh, <coughs> bless you. Oh my goodness! It's crazy because like um, if the speed limit is um, James, I'm so sorry. I have to take another shit, dude. Really? I swear to you, bro. This recording is gonna have to stop real quick. Hold on. Oh wait. Let me just put the SD card back in here. For those of you guys who don't see what's going on, well, you're looking at something else dancing now. I don't know what it is. I don't know. Future James will figure that out. Uh, whatever that is. But um, yeah, bro. Just. That's good. <coughs> Carl's gonna go take a fat sh Okay, well, there you go. That was Carl running out to drop his kids off. Drop the brown, the browns. Um, at the bowl. Just make sure that uh, you're doing what you love doing.
and you always continue to strive and work hard and um yeah guess who decided to join the party <laughs> <laughs> diabetes <laughs> uh welcome back good sir <laughs> bro i feel like my eyes <laughs> just <laughs> too much <laughs> <laughs> That's what you say when you come back. <laughs> <laughs> what were you talking about? <laughs> uh, 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 you, you'll you'll have to listen to it, man. Dang, dude! You'll I'm... have to listen to the podcast. Dude. You have one viewer, one <laughs> listener, Carl himself. It's <laughs> so the only um, person listening to our podcast, man. <laughs> oh. So uh, before you went to go take a massive dump, we were dude. talking about what pisses us off in our pet peeves, and you oh, were yeah. mentioning uh, the car. Uh, yes. I wanted to add on to that. What's up? Um, something, and this might hit a nerve for some people, because I know that there are a good amount of people that do this, but I get annoyed when people don't wear seatbelts. Yeah. Personally, I really don't People like do it. that? Yeah. A lot of people do it. And the thing about it is a lot of people, majority of the time, people do it in the backseat, you know? Um, oh, okay. And it's like, I get it. You know, you're an adult, okay? Yeah. But the thing about it is, like, back in the day, they would say, oh, you know, make sure that your child's in a seat. That's just because, like, kids are stupid sometimes. And kids <laughs> just don't, you know, they just Control don't do other. what they're supposed to do. And as an adult, like, as an adult, you should know to wear a seatbelt, you know? So, yes, it's true. It's not like... I mean, no, no, it is legal. No, it, it is illegal to wear seatbelt. It's belt. illegal to yeah, not yeah, wear seatbelt. Yeah, yeah, you're supposed seat to wear seatbelt. You know, um, people don't wear seatbelts because it's uncomfortable or because maybe they just forget. But that could be that thing that stops you from dying. Yeah, <clears throat> like, you know how fast you can go? Like, if you just crash and then you just fly. That's my one, that's my, one of my biggest fears. Bro, it's... Is that, like, if the seatbelt doesn't get me, like, I'll fly forward. You're done, Zos. Like, you're, dude, you're, you're, checking you're out. done. You're done. You're done. You're over. Car doesn't even stop, just runs you over. Exactly. Like, it's, it's just, it's horrible. Roadkill. <laughs> ten, points. <laughs> ten points Griffin <laughs> um, but doesn't. yeah man uh, I feel like um, this, this is my theory if you don't wear seatbelts in cars then it means either two things one it means that you don't care about your life and you know that's it you, just, you don't care about your life if you check out then you check out okay or two you've never been in a car accident before Honestly, uh, because trust me, I feel like if you have been in a car accident, mm-hmm. you're not going to do it because you've experienced it. You know, mm-hmm. you've, you've seen what it's like to be in a car accident in a bad one. I'm not talking about like a fender bender. I mean, like a real accident where the car is total. Yeah. If you've gone in an accident, you're most likely going to wear a seatbelt. And if you haven't gone in an accident, you're most likely just going to think like, oh, no, it's just like it's not going to happen to me. It's not possible. Yeah. You know, you're not invincible. Things, trust me, things will happen to you. Yeah. You know, and if you have been in a car accident, but you still don't wear a seatbelt, then yeah, then you probably just don't care. And it's, it's, not, it's, not, it's not also just about like you not caring about your own life. You're also like not caring about other people's lives too. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because it's like, if, if someone sees you doing that, they could be influenced by like, oh, I guess it's okay to not wear my seatbelt. You know what I mean? It's like a little change reaction thing. So it's like you just doing that may cause more people to like not want to wear their seatbelts. Yeah. And then it just causes this whole freaking accident that you do not, you do not want. Like, I don't, I don't know why people may think that it's stupid to wear a seatbelt. I don't think it's stupid at all. I feel like, because bro, I'm telling you, like one of my fears is to fly forward from a windshield, bro. Like imagine if I had to come to a complete halt I crash into the back of a car, the car stops, but the momentum, you just shoot. Yeah. You know what I mean? So that's scary. But I mean, like, to to add on to, like, the car thing, like, <clears throat> like one of my pet peeves while driving is, um, uh, what is it? It's like when it starts raining in Virginia, like, there's this certain switch that these, uh, that these drivers get that turns stupid. <laughs> I don't know what the f*** it is. It's like, I get it. You're trying to drive careful. Yeah. But it's like, you just don't care. You know what I mean? It's just, they're like, they start driving real slow, like grandma, like grandma type. You know what I mean? And it's just like, I get that we have to drive slow, but that doesn't mean you have to drive at like five miles per hour. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, and it just like, you know, like, it, it's not just speeding that causes accidents. It's also like, 
slow people. Because, you know, like, what if you're being slow, causes a traffic jam, some person doesn't realize that we stopped because they're just so used to this road being this miles per hour. 60 to 70 and they just, hour. like, and they just go. And they don't realize, oh, shit, the car. And then they just abruptly stop, causes an accident. It's just, like... It causes accidents, too, if you drive slow. But it's just some people do, like, the weirdest things when it rains, too. It's, like, the signals don't come on. Mm -hmm. Or it's, like, you you just want to... Everyone's... They no, they notice that everyone's driving slow. They just want to cut everyone off. And it's, like, bro, it's, like, should you really be doing that in the rain, though? No, that's... Just stick to your lane. That's so, dangerous. That's hell dude, dangerous. It's, like, it's ridiculous, man. Because I remember... I remember when I was driving over to... I was driving from work over back here to Virginia Beach, mm -hmm. and then when it started raining, like, this dude, no turn signal, no nothing, just decides to, like, get right in front of me. And I'm just like, dude, it's like there's, like, all these cars packed over here. Like, what are you trying to cut into my lane for? You know mm -hmm. what I mean? And it's just like, we're all going to get, we're all trying to get to the other side of the tunnel. There's no reason why you would want to just skip ahead of me to get to a faster lane. Yeah. It's like we're all going to get to the end of the tunnel eventually, just except that you're in traffic you know what i mean but no you want to speed it makes no sense bro you know what i found interesting what's up? about today so on today's date um what's supposed to happen is there's supposed to be like this rare blue moon that's supposed to pop out yeah i know you're right i yeah. forgot where i saw it from but yeah, you're right. I think, there was is. On, I think it was on like Instagram or something. But yeah. there's supposed to be like this super rare blue moon that's not gonna like appear until like 2037 or some some year. But it's gonna it's gonna show around like 12 a.m. It's like a super blue moon. Are you gonna take pictures of it? I feel like you should take pictures of it. I will definitely try. If we have, well, the thing about it is we also have a hurricane coming our way, so there might we not even do have be a hurricane any. You know, there might be a lot of cloud coverage. True. Um, but if there is no cloud coverage. I'll absolutely go. Weather's that. just been bad here lately. And like in Virginia Beach? Yeah. Like, because it's like, I think it's so stupid how the heat decided to come in in August rather than the summer. <laughs> like, that, that's not, like, that's the one thing about, like, people warned me when I first got to Virginia. They were just like, yeah, dude, I just expect all four seasons in one day. <laughs> and I was just like, uh huh. Our weather is very bipolar. <laughs> I don't know like, why. I don't get it. And then next thing you know, there's one day where it was like, Oh, yeah, it's going to be sunny today. Yeah, but it's going to pour down in, like, 12. Yeah. And then next thing you know, it's like, oh, yeah, and it's also going to get super windy, too. <laughs> just to give you a heads up. And then it'll go back to sunshine and being humid again. Yeah. That was, so, like, Virginia weather. Like, hey, I'm from an island, man. <laughs> like, our weather stays at, like, 80 or 90 degrees, but it's a good heat. Mm -hmm. It's, like, island heat, you know? And it's, like, it's not as humid. It's, like, dry heat, and then... There's always beach access. Oh. You know what I mean? So it's like it really feels the water always feels nice. It, the water never feels cold on the island. Man, dry heat is so much better than humidity, man. Nah, dude. It's like whenever the roads start filling up with like water over here, bro, it's like I'm done. Like I just don't want to be outside. <sighs> like I'd rather like I'd rather be on an island or I'd rather be working out and sweating my <laughs> off rather than sweating out there. Mm -hmm. Especially like, bro, it's like does your is your car like does blue get super hot in it? Bro, blazing hot. Yeah. Super hot. I just, <laughs> I just like recently bought um, the little windshield cover because it gets so hot in my car. Yeah, I hate that. Yeah. Because it was um, one of their, whenever I was driving uh, the van, it was like, I forgot what, what was going on, but it was the day where it was like a hundred and some degrees outside, right? And then me not focusing on what the, the weather forecast was going to be like for the day after, I just parked right out the front. Mm -hmm. I didn't park in the garage where it was shade. I just parked in the front. I was like, oh, screw it. I just wanted to park the car and go home. Because I step outside. I'm like, damn, it is a hot day today. I step inside of the front. I step inside of the car. Like, bro, I swear to you, I've turned, like, my skin melted off. <laughs> skin <laughs> really? melted. I was just like, I had to turn the AC. And the AC doesn't work. It's like blowing hot air. That You know oh, that, yeah. that hot air at yeah, first? Yeah. Dude, I thought I was going to die. Turn into beef jerky. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> what? Why oh, being jerky? Sh shrinking, oh, yeah. dehydrating. <laughs> <laughs> I'm melting. I'm oh, melting. Bro. No, I mean that's that's Virginia, man. Like Virginia is the one place that I know 
<laughs> where it can rain and be sunny at the same time. <laughs> like I don't understand. It's, and it's I weird. hate it because it gets so humid because it rains so bad, dude. Yeah. You know what this like podcast thing that we're doing like reminds me of? Mm-hmm. I don't know if you ever watched that 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 Bobby Altoff podcast where it's like this blonde girl and she's like interviewing she's like doing a podcast with people oh. but it's like super awkward. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so it's like it's like she was she was in bed with Drake. And then she's just like, dude, watching her is so uncomfortable. But it's funny, though, because she's such a bitch. Really? She's super sarcastic. She's just like, why do you do that? Yeah, don't call me that. I have more followers than you. But, like, she gets people like Drake to be on the podcast. That's what I'm saying, That's dude. That's crazy. Like, she spent all the money. She had, like, Drake, Lil Yachty. She had Mark Cuban on her show. Like, what? Like, what? Who is she? <laughs> I don't know. She's a really weird white girl. But I think it's a character, though. Okay. I think it's what she does. It's like she, she it's called the really good podcast. Mm-hmm. And she just like has these podcasts with these mm-hmm. like famous people. And it's like super awkward. But when she does like an interview for like a show or something, like she talks like a regular person. But it's just like, damn, it's super awkward. I heard that the interview with Drake got taken down. Yeah, because there was like some beef behind her sometimes. Like beef between those know. two? Or? Yeah, beef between those two. I don't know. I've been seeing a lot of notifications. Like, the the up thing was it was like Bobby missed her son's first birthday to be at that interview. Oh my god! Put it up here. Mm. Lean a little bit. I'll move it. I'll move it. Don't worry about it. I'll I'll be in a better position. Sorry, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, but yeah, no, she missed her. She missed her her son's first birthday. How? I don't. Why would you do that? Why would you want to miss your son's birthday? Why would you, if you, if you, if you, even if you do, why would you make that public? <laughs> keep that to yourself. Yeah, keep she said a, that in the interview. She's keep like, it in the family. I missed that. <laughs> She's family secrets. Oh, man. <laughs> she was like, yeah, um, I missed my first son's birthday. Took him here. He was like, <laughs> Drake was drinking. He was like, you did that to interview me? Why would you do that? <laughs> <laughs> so awkward, dude. I'm so concerned. I know. I was just like, why would you do that? Like, why would you not go want to go to your son's first birthday and then interview a celebrity instead? Like, that doesn't make any sense. Oh, man, I feel like I missed out on watching that. Dude, it, you, like, you should watch it. It's on YouTube. Oh, it, it is? It's on YouTube. Hmm. Did it get taken down? I don't know. That's just what I've heard. I'm going to check it out. Yeah, let me, let me look. While you check it out, I'll think of the next thing that, like, <laughs> bugs me. Um, what makes me, what pisses me off, guys? Oh, man, I wish there was, what, what makes James upset? What grinds my gears? Hmm. You know, this is a very obvious one, but, actually, no, 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 all right, I got one, I got one. Um, also may, uh, relate to a lot of people. I really don't like it when people litter. Um, oh, yeah, no. Dude, I saw this guy, like, I saw this guy throw down, like, a gum wrapper, like, on the street. Mm. I was like, bro, there's literally a trash can, like, a few steps ahead of you. Like, why would you throw it on the ground? Like, are we still doing that? Like, we like no. we can still just litter? And you just... know that's illegal in, like, I think it's, like, Singapore or something. I think it's illegal here, too. Oh, yeah, I know, but then it's, like, this is, like, brutal punishment. Oh. Like, you can't, oh. you can't even chew gum out in public. Oh, that's yeah. That like different. they keep their shit clean, bro. I mean, like, shirts sure, sure clean babies, there. Though. Like babies, ass, like Pampers wipes clean. Man, America is too free. <laughs> like you get, like you get cane, bro. Oh, I swear to you, that I so you get cane. Okay, caned, caned for chewing gum. You gotta start bringing that to America, bro. It's it's okay. okay yeah, what happens? Where do you get cane for chewing gum? Well, not anymore. But oh. what happened to the kid that was caned in Singapore? Jeez, just for chewing gum, that all right, that's yeah, I think it wild. was. I think it was in Singapore. That's but it's wild. like they just want to keep their stuff clean. I understand. Yeah, but it's like it's like we're too free. <laughs> um, yeah, like it's just like <laughs> it's, it's it's. I think it is the stupidest thing because obviously there's a lot of trash. Okay. Yeah, I know, like, by throwing something away, you're not saving the world. But just why add to it? Just, I don't understand why people just can't hold on to their trash and then just be respectful and throw it away when you find a trash can. There's so many trash cans everywhere. 
-hmm. like especially for people in their car a lot of the time because i drive a lot you know yeah um, a lot of the times i'll see people just throw things out the window and i'm like okay so you're in a car so you no matter what destination you're going i would put a thousand dollars down that your destination has a trash can like <laughs> it's just because it's just that's what we have that's what we yeah. do you know so that, I mean, that oh my gosh you. Wait, I don't know if you talked about this already, but it's like it's something that really irks me. Like when people like throw their cigarette butts outside their windows. That relates. I, I didn't talk about it, but no, that relates. No, dude, like I hate when people do that. Like when people smoke cigarettes, mm -hmm. right? And they just, when they're done with it, they throw it outside of no. the window. It's like, why, why you gotta do that? Just <laughs> put it down, leave it in your car first, and then throw it away at a proper spot. Exactly. Why do you gotta throw it out? If you're smoking in your car, the smell, I'm sure, is already in your car. Yeah. So just, yeah, you know, kill the cigarette in your car. <laughs> like throwing it outside, the smell is probably. Next, you know, there's like gas on the floor or something. <laughs> that, 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 that's, that, that's, a, that's a movie scene right there. Yeah, <laughs> that's Final Destination. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, man, I don't know. Littering, I just, I just think it's dumb. Dude, just don't litter. It's horrible. Like, really? Like I had... we're grown. <laughs> You can't hold on to a gum wrapper in your pants for like a f***ing 30, 10 minutes? Like, you gotta just throw it out? Like, grow the f*** up. It's so Man, stupid. Like, honestly. No, like, people are pretty stupid when it comes to, like, littering, though. Because I just, I just don't understand it. But, um, what is it? I was gonna ask you a question. Oh, and by the way, if you feel some type of way for me saying that, then, like, again, You're horrible. Like, grow up. Like, it's just... <laughs> it's, 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 it's simple. It's very simple. Throw it away in a proper spot. Just honestly, that's it. Oh, yeah. So another thing I wanted to talk to you about was, um, what is it? I think, um, so we've talked about how like things irritate us, mm -hmm. but I was going to ask you like, what's, what's one thing that can like calm you down in such a hectic situation? Like what's the what, number one thing that you know is going to calm you down? Hmm. Like if, just say like all hell and life breaks loose, right? And you're stressing out. What's something that you can just immediately like, something that just has to happen for you to just be like, okay. Can I say three things? Sure, sure, <laughs> you can say three things. Let's all right, so things. I have three things, okay? I'll keep it short. Um, one is, this is kind of like a combination, but being alone listening to lo-fi. Yeah. Um, I love lo-fi. I think lo-fi hip-hop really calms me down. And yeah. uh, I just, I don't know, I have no thoughts. You're just such an aesthetic guy like that. You know? <laughs> like the basic dude who has like two monitors on his desk listening to like lo-fi on one screen with like <laughs> lo-fi girls studying. That's and me, you're bro. typing out something or editing some shit. That, that, that's honestly me. Like that is my safe place, man. I'm in my room. I got, you know, lights on, the lo fi is playing. And I'm on the TV, like, on the, the PS4? Yeah. <laughs> That's, and then I'm just on my computer doing my thing. That was your setup, dog. It's, it still is my setup, bro. Do you still have those speakers for your PC? Yeah. Remember those, like, small like, yeah, circle little speakers? Little yeah, yeah, the little portable one. Yeah, I got to get a new one. <laughs> those, those, those what boobies, are those? Like, little boobies, like, on the <laughs> side. Little boobies yeah. on the side. Yeah. Oh my <laughs> this God. one works a little better than this one. <laughs> <laughs> this one hangs down a little bit more than this one. <laughs> But you know that's only because of the wire. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> this uh, one had a kid. <laughs> last one, two is honestly talking to my friends. Yeah. Um, friends slash siblings, because like I don't know, uh, I just like we mentioned in previous podcasts, like having a really strong support group can honestly take you a long way. You know, yeah, they really facts. keep me grounded. Like for example, like if I'm in a tough situation, I know I just know I can call you. I can tell you how I feel. I know that you'll be there for me. You know. Yeah. Yeah, um, for sure. Lastly. Uh, God. Yeah. Praying. Mm. Uh, praying to God, take some time, just being alone, me and him, chatting it out, you know. You know, playing, For sure. Playing, you know. For sure. Video games. I don't know why I'm doing this. <laughs> My mom would always say, this is video games. But yeah, those are the three things. Lo-fi, friends, God. Mm, true. Yeah, I guess for me, if I were to pick three things that like really calm me down, I'll start from, like, the least to, like, my number one. So it's, like, I feel like we have, like, the same stuff. Because it's, like, but I wouldn't listen to, like, lo-fi, though. Mm -hmm. It's, like, more, um, 
I listen to a lot of like alter like alternative indie stuff. Yeah, you, I don't know. You do. I do, yeah. bro. Like I don't know if you know like my music type, but yeah. it's like it's only gotten to um what is it? It only started in like 2020, I think. It's cuz I was trying to this is me trying to learn new things, right? So I decided to, like I wanted to learn how to skateboard. Okay. Right. So this I I swear to you I did not listen to this type of music like at all back then. It was mainly just like Hip hop, lo fi, that was it. That's all I knew. And then also, like, when I was in middle school and high school, I had, like, my emo phase. Yeah, we all had But never, emo. like, but never, like, indie stuff. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It's always, like, some hard punk stuff. You know what I mean? Dear Maria? But, yeah, like, Dear, Mir- Dear Maria or, like, My Chemical Romance, you know, Pierce the Veil. Like, I used to listen to all those guys. Mm-hmm. But then, whenever it came to me learning how to skateboard, given i love to listen to music so i wanted to like i don't know if i feel like if i listen to music i'll get into the vibe of things like i can't i have to wash like i have to play music while washing dishes or like mm. i have to play music while cleaning the room because i always like pick it out like it's like some movie montage that's going on i play <laughs> my life out like a movie dude it's ridiculous that's like i feel cool. like i'm main character and there's background music like you know I know you know what scenes I'm talking about. Yeah, like, when something's know, going on and there's music it. playing. So yeah, but it wasn't until I started learning how to skateboard there was like this playlist on Spotify called uh, called uh, Skater Vibes, mm. and that's whenever like all this there was some rap music in there, but then it was mainly like there's mainly like indie stuff, and I was listening to a lot of like Current Joys, uh, The Misfits, uh, what is it? I was listening to a lot of Tyler the Creator, but more of his like indie side where he was singing like Earthquake or See You Again. And then I was talking I was uh I was um what is it? There's a there's a song. I forgot who it was. Damn it. But yeah, no, I just started really getting into like some indie music. So like or Vampire Weekend. Like I'll listen to a lot of Vampire Weekend because it just reminds me of a movie. Okay. And I feel like something's supposed to happen at that moment where it's like I can just listen to it and I'll feel calm and then I can get whatever I need to get done. Uh, second is for sure praying, like having time with God because it's like I felt like back then I used to have like a not a lot of self-control over myself and like you should, you've seen that side of me, like you know that. Mm-hmm. And it's like, but now that I've been implementing God into my life, it's just gotten so much more calmer and peaceful for me knowing that I don't have to run back to what's comfortable and I don't have to run back to what I thought was normal when it really wasn't so whenever something bad happens I'll just be like yeah I gotta go pray like I just gotta talk to God right now and I gotta like receive what he's trying to tell me rather than like what I'm trying to tell myself because if I try to figure it out I'm not I'm never gonna figure it out God will guide me through that Mm -hmm. so that's number two I'm not saying that that's that should be like number one, but I mean we're not really like. But rank- we're not like. Yeah, we're not ranking that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but it's just like. But for me, uh, my number one thing that so like something can happen to really calm me down is if I'm in a very like hectic situation, and someone just grabs me and hugs the living <laughs> shit out of me. I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is. It was like um. It was like that one time whenever um we were going through that situation at the studio. Yeah. And it was like, all you guys had to do was just like, hold me real f***ing tight. And just like, just tell me we're good. And then that's when I knew how to like, okay, tone it down. Like, I'm good. Because I felt comforted. I felt like I felt like I was going to be okay. You know, I had people there to look after me. So that's one, that's like probably number one thing. It's like, so if you ever see me, oh, the, if you guys ever see me, uh, get into a like hectic situation, bro. Like, you can either just like tap me on the shoulder or like rub like rub my shoulder or something just to bring me back into reality. You know what's something that I've I feel like I need to get checked for that I have not get checked hmm. by is ADHD. Yeah. Like I think <laughs> I need to get checked for ADHD because I really feel like I have it, mm-hmm. but it's like I just never got checked for it. But then I I do this thing where I go on TikTok and then it just tells me like uh, your symptoms of having ADHD. So it's like you're hyper attentive. You're uh, what is it? There was this one creepy thing that I saw where it was like you know your ADHD when you go through um, what is it? You're about to eat, but you always use that one utensil. 
Yeah, it's like you don't care what's in there. Like you have to have that one because I can point out the spoon that I use right away. <laughs> like there's like if I'm gonna eat, I have to use this exact spoon. Interesting. Or it's not gonna feel right, you know. And I feel like I have like all these symptoms, but it's like I never got fully checked up for it. Like I wasn't diagnosed for anything. Like I, I, I don't know. <laughs> I went to uh, Target this one time with Jasper, and we were talking about like me being like hella ADHD. Yeah. And she was like, I saw these like you know those like vitamin gummies. Yeah. The medicine. So it's like I'm going through like the vitamin gummies, and then I was like. Hey babe, look like these gummies are for um, for focusing. You think I should get them? She's like, you don't need that. Sh you need Adderall. <laughs> you need I was just like, what do you mean? Like, I'm not even that bad when it comes to focusing, but I don't think Adderall is gonna do it that much either. But I mean, I don't know. I feel like I should get checked for it because it's like sometimes like I can be all over the place, or like mm -hmm. even at the times for like, there's this uh, common thing that like people with ADHD do. ADHD people do is they could be f so focused on one task but then get sidetracked into doing more and more and more and more tasks mm -hmm. and it's like you completely forgot what the first priority was and I do that a lot like when it comes to like folding laundry like I'll fold laundry and then I'll stop like right when I'm about to be done because something else distracted me to go to I was like oh crap I gotta do this and then I did it but then I definitely forgot about laundry and then I start getting complacent and you just start getting lazy. But I'd have to be like super like locked into something to mm -hmm. really like focus on it. But if there's just so much stuff going on, I can't. Mm. Yeah, so that's why if you like see, if, even if you see me in class, like I cannot keep, keep still. I can't, dude, like I have to move. And I get in trouble for it, but I have to move. <laughs> it's just You're in a dance studio, you're in the place to move. Right? So it's, like, it's, it's just something that's gonna have to happen. But yeah, no, that's something that that's something that I do that has to deal with me like having to find my calm in a really bad place. Mm. Like it's just I feel like I just need a hug, you know, just to be comforted. And it's kind of a thing to say, but it's like you know, who cares, man? I mean, I don't think it's a thing to say. Yeah. I think that um, I think that your love language might be physical touch. I think it might be too, but I also feel like it's also um, for me, I think it's words of affirmation. I think that's mine. Like, I think physical touch is probably my second one, but when it comes to like what I really love to hear is when someone's telling me that I did a great job. Mm -hmm. And something about that just hypes me up. That's why I I don't know if you notice me, but it's like. If I do something, I'll be like, hey, do you think this is good? Hey, like, can I always have to oh, like, oh, yeah. It's like, hey, do you, like, do you think this looked good? Or like, how did you, like, do you think I should do anything about it? And then when someone's like, oh, no, no, you know, it looks great. Like, just keep it. Mm -hmm. It's just like, eh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I did that. I did that. <laughs> but I also feel like it just, they say that your number one love language is something that you wished you would have gotten when you were a kid. That's what people say about your love language. And mine is not physical touch, because my mom beats the <laughs> It's not that. <laughs> well, what do you, what do you, what's yours? Um, honestly, I... Because I don't think it's physical touch. I don't know. I really don't know what my love language is. I well, know it's not physical touch. Um, but, like, what is it that you cherish? Like, okay, um, let's say if someone gave you a gift. Mm -hmm. Like, how would you... F do you love to give gifts? I like giving gifts. But do you, like... When someone gives you a gift or when you give someone a gift, does it bring you, like, immense joys to give them a gift? It makes me happy, but not immense joy. Okay, then no, no, that's not it. What um, about, like, if... Okay, just imagine this, right? Mm -hmm. If you were... Um, you just did one small little thing, right? Just say if you took out the trash. Mm -hmm. And then your significant other went up to you and said, Hey, I just want to let you know that I really appreciate you for taking out the trash. Like You're doing a great job. How does that feel to you? That feels pretty good, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, that's I'll, like words I'll of like affirmation that. type. Yeah. Or like if someone's there just constantly telling you like, hey, or like if I went up to you and it's like, hey, James, I just wanna let you know that like I'm here for you and I'm always gonna be proud of you, like no matter what. Like I hope someone told you that they were proud of you today. You know what? I think you're onto something. <laughs> and I'm not trying to make this sound sad, but I don't I don't really remember getting any of that from my parents. Yeah. 
you know. Um, I, I feel like it's just like a force thing because it's like, you know, their parents. Yeah. I mean, it's just what they're supposed to do. But it's like it's different when it comes behind like actual feeling. Yeah. So that's why I say when it's like usually our number one like love language is something that we like, I think we craved growing up. So it's like. Words of affirmation. Yeah, words of affirmation might be one. Another one is like um, quality time. So just say if like if you were having, um, what is it, instead of your, what is it, instead of like let's just say your significant other wanted to do something, but they just thought about like, they had plans, but then if they were just like, oh, but I, I want to be able to spend time with you, and then you guys like, you hang out, phones away, just talking, you know what I mean? Like just spending quality time together. Like how does that make you feel? Um, I think that actually, you know what? Yeah, we're really breaking this down. Yeah, dude. It's like uh, you got to put it within like scenarios. I think quality time is one too. Um, and I think, yeah, I want to say quality time is one too. Because I think for me personally, something that I appreciate the most, like I love this. I really love this. And it's just hanging out with my friends. Like right now, I'm having a blast, bro. Yeah, me too, dog. Like... Me too. Honestly, and I feel, and that's why I'm, I'm willing to drive all the way here. <laughs> like, it's fun, you know? I'm <laughs> chilling. Um, but yeah, you don't no, even live here no more. I don't, yeah. I'm, I'm in a different city. But, yeah, I think maybe you're right. Quality time. I really, I really enjoy, you know, just, like, spending time with people. And I remember, oh, I have to say this. So, for my birthday, when you guys came to... Oh, uh, yeah, when we surprised yeah, you. Yeah, the surprise yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. All right, so, one... I was super happy to spend time with you guys because, like me, I don't really, I'm wearing a supreme hat, but I'm not very um, materialistic. I'm not that materialistic. You know, like if this hat got lost or like disappeared, all right, it's gone, you know? But I really appreciate the time that I spend with like my friends and my family. Yeah. And till this day, sometimes, it sounds so stupid, man, I can't believe I'm saying this, but till this day, sometimes I open my front door and I'm just like, surprise. And I like relive it. Oh. <laughs> it's so, it's so You're cheesy. It's so sappy, It's dude. so cheesy, no, that's, bro. that's cool, though. That's but I'm cool, like, man. surprise. I'm just like, ah, oh, man, that was a good time. And then I still have the confetti in the corner. I didn't clean it up. It's still there. <laughs> because it just reminds you. Yeah, it just reminds me, you know? It's, I'm just like, yeah. Yeah, I guess maybe quality of time and words of affirmation. Maybe those are my level. But I remember your face was so blank when you saw all of us on your birthday, dude. Bro, that was, was like, or was it your birthday that day? Or was it, Um, I think it was like a day before your birthday. I think so, it was like a day before. Yeah, it was on a Saturday. That's but that was, that was my genuine reaction. Like, <laughs> like, I was just like, you're I, shocked. I can't <laughs> comprehend that like my friends are here. Cause yeah. I'm in a different city. Yeah, you know, and it's you usually always going to see us. Yeah, yeah. This is the like people coming to see me, and like it was like a lot of you guys. I'm just like, yeah, you know, I feel so overwhelmed with like happiness right now. <laughs> like, I couldn't stop cheesing. Like I don't, I don't understand what's going on. You guys on. are all here. We're playing games. We're talking. You know, what I mean? like I was like, what? Yeah, so, yeah. I guess that is it. Yeah. Huh. Could be like, you know, it's either between like quality time or like words of effort. Because I know for a fact that my, like, given physical touch is probably my second because I am like a touchy person mm -hmm. and I love to like feel other people. Mm -hmm. Like, especially like if I'm like with Jasper, you can ask Jasper like how much I just like to, you know, like, give her like, a hug or anything and it just makes me feel better. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, like a hug calms me down. But then I feel like what really calms me down is like words because it's like, I feel like growing up, I didn't get that much, like, told that I was doing a good job, you know? Like, growing up, like, it's because I was, because it's the fact that, like, I guess it comes from my roots of, like, always being hard on myself. You know what I mean? Like, you know I have this problem. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, I'm always hard on myself. I'm always, like, there's something in my head always telling me, like, yeah, you're horrible, like, you don't know how to live your life. Like, you're just doing this bad thing. You're doing this bad thing. You're doing this bad thing. But if somebody comes to me and tells me that I'm doing a great thing, if somebody tells me that, like, I'm going down the right route, that, like, they're proud of me, it, like, it breaks it instantly for some reason. I don't know what it is. But I know for a fact that that's probably, like, one of my, like, that's probably my number one love language is, like, words of affirmation. I definitely understand, you know? Because, like I mentioned before, like, I didn't really get that, uh, I didn't really get those words, you know, growing up either. Um, yeah. 
like the first time I feel like the first time I feel like my mom said that she was proud of me was like when I graduated college really yeah I remember the first wow. time my dad said he loved me was when I was like 25 <laughs> like yeah Damn. I was like and it was very casual like, or right, 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 I love you it was like I was, I was on the phone and I was like <laughs> Who are you? What you do to my dad? <laughs> so like, yeah, I don't know. Um, like even you know for dancing and stuff. Like, mm-hmm. my parents have never seen me dance. Wow. They never, like they never came to like a performance or anything. No, like that? they've wow. never seen me dance. They've never seen any of my performances. Mm. Um, I remember one time I told them that I was dancing and they didn't support it because they were like, you know, you're in school. You're not. That's not yeah, you're making yeah. money. You got to focus on your school and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I felt that. Yeah. I know like, it comes from a place of love, you know, because they just mm-hmm. want me to be okay. Yeah. But um yeah, I didn't I didn't really get like, oh good job or oh yeah, send us a video. Yeah. Like Oh dude, that reminds me of a story where um cuz I was on Guam and this is whenever I had my own dance team and um I hosted this event at a club, right? Given, I'm going to tell you where I did it at. It was a club. Yeah. Right? It was a club and it was like 11 p.m. towards 12 a.m., right? I made it to the semifinals. It was the I made it to the semifinals on my own event. Not on, not on some, like, because, you know, the people who I made judge it were, yeah. like, pretty serious dancers, like, on the island. So I know they weren't just going to give me, like, a leeway, like, oh, yeah, you, we're just going to make you try to win because it's your <laughs> one. No, it wasn't anything like that. I was just like, damn, I actually made it to the semifinals, so I was like, I'm not that bad of a dancer. But it's like I was always hard on myself because I was just telling myself, like, man, there's, like, now I'm going to have to go up against, like, really, really, really good dancers, and now I'm scared. Yeah. Bro, tell me why, right? This thing, like, so growing up, my mom, like, she was already... The, she was already ready to get me out of dance. You know what I mean? She was already ready to do all that stuff. And what happened was, was something that like tripped me out about her was um, I was dancing and right before I was going to dance in the corner of my eye, there's like all these tall, tall people in the club, right? In the corner of my eye, I just see this short woman, short woman, like in the club. She looks super awkward. Like she doesn't belong there. It's my mom. I'm like, what the hell are you doing here? And she was just like, oh, I just, you know, I wanted to come and support, you know? I just wanted to. And then having my mom watching me dance and then her telling me, like, oh, my gosh, I didn't know you could move like that. You move so good. Like, it's different when it comes from a friend, but it's even more different when it comes from a parent. You know what I mean? Because these are the people that basically, like, raised you and, like, the people that you're around, like, 24-7. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's like whenever it came from my mom, I could swear to you, like at that moment, and I hugged her, I cried. Because I never felt like my mom ever seen me at that happy place at all. Because dance was like, at that time, dance, and it still is, but like at that time when it was like super rough, because like, you know, my dad just left and everything was just rough on the island for me. Like having that type of love there for me after like all this stuff, it was just like, wow. Like she, she cares that I'm dancing. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then it even got so, like, I feel like it was just, especially when it came to my first performance that she's ever watched, like, me on stage, because she's never seen the practice of me. She's never watched a dance video of me whatsoever, right? But when she saw the glow on my face when I was up on stage and I was just dancing my heart out, she was like, I just did not know you could move like that. And when she tells me stuff like that, it just made me just, like, think, damn, my mom genuinely gives a about me. You know, she, she, she supports what I'm doing. You know what I mean? So it's like, I feel like hearing those words come out of like a parent, like really hits home with me personally. That's just me. But that's just like words of affirmation type shit. Like her telling me that she's proud that I'm doing. And then it gets so far to the point to where it's like, even when I first got here to Virginia and I was spending money like an idiot, right? She said something that I never would have thought she would have said. She was like, you're spending all this money. How are you supposed to save up so that you can open up the studio that you want? Because this is whenever I used to have a dream to open up my own studio. Mm-hmm. And then she was just like, how are you going to open your open up your own studio if you don't even, if you're spending all this money? I was like, what the f***? You're over here thinking about me opening up a studio? Like, wow, like you remembered that I wanted to open up a studio. Like, I, I, I feel like I barely even tell you that, you know? So it's like those little kind of like words that like get to me. You know what I mean? The whole like words of affirmation thing. But yeah, that's definitely like probably number one love language for me because that's why I'm always asking like, hey, did he, or I don't want to show people the choreo, 
but it's like I want to hear you tell me that I'm doing a good <laughs> job so I can keep going. Yeah. I say that with a shaking hand. <laughs> like, Give it to me! <laughs> it's yeah. like Spongebob. <laughs> when like, he was like in, when he was in Sandy's dome with no water. Oh yeah. <laughs> Sandy, <laughs> water! <laughs> I need Oh man, bro. That's <laughs> honestly though. That's that's beautiful, man. Like yeah, man. I think that and like we need. I think it's such a crucial thing for parents <laughs> to. No pun intended. <laughs> um, but I think that it's such a crucial thing for parents to just like get to know your child. Yeah. Dude. Like not just like his name and how the grades he gets stuff, but like mm-hmm. what is what does your daughter like to do? Yeah. You know, like. I feel like that's such an important thing. And it's just like, I feel like that will definitely help kindle an actual relationship between you mm-hmm. and your, your child. Your child and yeah. I don't know. I think that's a beautiful thing. man. I think it kind of goes both ways to where it's like, because how do I put it this? It's like, I get it. But then again, there's always like that little thing that you, it's like a boundary. You know what I mean? There's a boundary that you have to keep mm-hmm. because Given, I feel like this next generation of kids is going to be completely different than how we were raised. Um, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Dude. Yeah. AI and everything. And it's like how, because what we grew up with, we didn't have that freedom. Like we were always told, you can't go here, you can't go here, you can't do this. No, you have to keep focusing on your school, whatever, right? Now we live in a world where it's like, yeah, you don't even have to go to college. You know, you don't have to go to college to pursue whatever the hell you want to do in life. You know, and it's like, Given, I feel like the kids of this age that are going to grow up are going to have more freedom. But it's also, we, I think we do have to keep some of the things that our parents taught us. Like, knowing how to put that boundary down to where it's like, yeah, they can do whatever they want, but you can't fail school. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It's like, you decide whether you want to go to college or not. Yeah. You know. But if you know, if I can see that you can fully support yourself and what you're doing is like giving you like a great life. And even it's like, here, let me just say this. You don't have to give me the end product immediately. Like, but I have to have known you for your whole life, knowing that you are a determined kid. Like in high school, you were grinding, you were pushing. And then like how I know that you're going to carry that mentality into the real world. And it's also just like learning how to trust your own kid. Like given, I ha- I feel like we, like you and I don't have a right to say this because it's like we're not parents. Yeah. We don't know. But I'm saying from what I've, my experience and what I feel like I would put my kid through is that like most definitely, like I want you to be free. Like I want you to go through the things that, like I don't think I, like what is it? I told this to Jasper all the time, but it's like I want my kid to go through a heartbreak. Like, I want them to be hurt. You know what I mean? Because it's like, it teaches you. Like, that pain teaches you of, like, what you deserve, what your worth is, and what you want in a person. So it's like, if some, if my kid comes to me one of these days, like, if they have, like, a boyfriend or a girlfriend or something, and they're just like, oh, my gosh, they, they broke up with me. I don't know how to feel. I feel so sad. And I'll be like, good. You're a human being. You're going you're gonna to feel things. You know what I mean? But you're just going to have to suck it up. That's life, dude. You know? But what did you learn from it? Did you like the way you felt? Do you think you should have picked them better? Do you think you should have, you could have done something differently? It's like, I would want them to know, like, because it's also the fact that you have to make them realize it's like, life is not going to be all sunshine and rainbows. You know, you're going to have those days where those things are good. Those days are going to get dark, dude. And you just have to, like, be fully prepared for that as, like, a parent to be like, okay, I've been through this before. Um, did I handle it properly? Do I think that I can tell them what they I think they should do? Or, like, you know? But at the end of the day, the number one thing is just be there for your kid. Whatever they feel like they want to pursue, even if you think it's stupid. <laughs> Like, if they want to be a f***ing professional shuffleboarder. <laughs> Are you they, good at they, it, bro? We got a lot of respect. <laughs> I got you, dog. <laughs> but, yeah, it's. I feel like within that realm, it's just going to have to be, like, 
they're going to be free to do what they want because mm. all of us are going to want to provide them the things that we never had. Yeah. But we do have to keep some of those like old traditions to where it's like you have to make sure to keep be keeping yourself in check. You have to make sure that you're passing school. You have to make sure that Maybe. there's going to be some days where I'm not going to allow you to go somewhere because I feel like it's not, first of all, it's like under, I feel like it's not a good idea. And I'm still your I'm still your parent, and you're not in that age to make your own decision yet. Yeah. But if you show me that I can trust you, then go for it. But if you've given me reasons not to, then no, you're staying home. And try to understand and, why. Yeah, and have them understand, like, don't be full of envy towards me. Yeah. Just, this is what you showed me, what I feel like you deserve. I think that a lot of parents would say, oh, you can't do something, you should listen to me because I'm the parent, I said so. But there is no logic in that. You're pretty much teaching your child that like people can just tell you what to do without any sort of actual logic behind it. Yeah. I feel like if parents were to, like, of course be like, oh, I wanna go to the party and your, your parent says, no, don't go. Like, obey your parents, sure. But if you don't want to, you ask why, I think that the mom or the dad should be able to give a logical reason as to why. Yeah. You know, like, oh, it's just because I don't think it's safe. Oh, it's because, you know, from your behavior, I just don't, I don't really trust you with doing something like that or mm -hmm. being in that kind of environment. You know, I yeah. feel like that helps the child, you know, think logically and understand, oh, my mom or dad isn't just, you know, strict. They have a reason, you know. Yeah. It's honestly just for you know, the sake of me. Yeah. And that's, that's what I think, too, is to where it's like, even it's the simplest thing to where it's like, if I, even if I told my kid, like, oh, why can't I do this? Why can't I do that? What's well, like, have you given me any reason to allow you to do that? Like, I told you to wash the dishes and you didn't do it. Yeah. You know, it's like, I feel disrespected as a parent because it's like, I'm over here doing everything for you. It's like, given, right, you're a parent, you're supposed to feel obligated in some sort of way because that is your kid, that is your obligation. But at the end of the day, it comes to like, you have to teach them what the real world is, like what's going to happen in the real world. Yeah. It's like there's going to be a logic reason why people treat you the way that they do. Not just because I'm your parent. It's because you're being a <laughs> <my> kid. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like that's the end of it. So it's like if you give me a reason to where I can trust you to do what you want, mm -hmm. then so be it. You know what I mean? But I feel like it's going to be this whole new generation. Like I'm kind of I'm excited for it because I feel like I'm excited because I feel like there's going to be, like, a lot of kids don't do what they get to do because they're held back by parents, you know? Like, given, there's those, there's those jobs or those careers where it's like, can you make money off of this? And that's what people mainly think about. And as sad as it is to say, it's a real question to ask because mm -hmm. our society runs on money. And it's not getting any better. And it's not getting any better either, especially with, like, prices going up. It's like, it's going to happen, bro. Yeah. And money is just like, you don't want money to be a problem, but it is. But then again, at the end of the day, like, you can have, like, hundreds and thousands of dollars and still be miserable. Yeah. But I'd rather my own child to like know that they're happy with what they're doing and if there's some logic behind it you know then go for it but then i'm also worried because it's like how far can this freedom go what are we gonna start allowing these kids to do and just make it seem like it's an okay thing with no discipline behind it mm -hmm. that's scary i think you know what um, i mean I think one of the scariest parts of, granted, I'm not a parent, you know, yeah. with kids, but I'm just assuming, guessing, you know, one of the scariest parts about being a father or like having children is knowing that like your kid's going to get hurt. Yeah. And like physically, emotionally, mm -hmm. like they're going to get hurt. Like your little precious daughter, she's going to scrape her knee. She's going to bleed. She could break an arm. She could break a finger. She could break her fingers. Yeah. Like, Things are gonna happen. She yeah. could get a concussion, get sick, yeah, and yeah. you just have to understand that, like, that's honestly life. Like when we were yeah. kids, how many times did you get injured? A lot. Yeah, <laughs> I, I broke my arms three times. I fell off roofs. Dude. Yeah, you're stupid. <laughs> Imagine like that being your daughter. Yeah. 
the daughter fell off of a roof. Mm-hmm. That I'm not gonna say that's gonna happen, but like, <laughs> dude, I hope not. <laughs> if that <laughs> can happen to my kid, Sally, I'm, what you doing on the roof? Get I'm, down! No, I'm barging through your <laughs> door. Uh, I'm like, James, guess what my daughter did? What? She fell off a roof. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, we are talking about it in the next podcast. <laughs> No, but yeah, no, man. No, I get that though, yeah. Oh man, I don't know. Being a being a parent is a lot of responsibility. No, but the one of the things that I feel like is super scary is like the reason why I would be protective, right? Is because anything can happen to your kid. The last thing I would ever want is a fucking phone call. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like that is the last thing. Like I know for a fact that I've had gosh like i've had some friends like in florida that like passed away and it's like just no seeing their mom's reaction it's like damn you lost your child like that sucks which is a reason why to be so protective too because it's like a lot of it's not at the end of the day it's like you have to make them realize it's like it's not that i don't trust you you know you probably gave me a reason to trust you and you've done everything right but it's just like if i just smell something fishy about it like it's because there's just stupid people out there. You know what I mean? You know, and it's like, you may be in some type of safe environment and then next thing you know, some decides yeah. to pull a gun out. Like that's, yeah. like that's horrible. That's life. That, and that's like, sad as, sad as it is to say that is life. Like people do dumb yeah. and it causes, it causes people to lose lives. And that's like, that must be so scary. Like, I can't, like, I feel like I could never bear that pain, dude. That would hurt way too much, dude. It's really scary with teenagers because most teenagers, they swear that they're invincible. They think that nothing's going to happen to them. Because I've been there. Yeah. You know, I'm sure you've been <laughs> dude, there. Like, you yeah. just thought that nothing can bad. Like, bro, I was 16, 17 going to clubs, dude. Yeah. And going to, like, reckless parties. Yeah. Not knowing it's, like, what if someone, like, laced drinks or, like, if, you know, just some bad situation happening. Like, and especially if you're, like, in a crowd of people. And you don't know what the hell is going to happen. No. But you just go because it's like you have a reckless mind. You don't give a shit. You just care about having fun. Yeah, I mean, no, like, that, that that stuff happens to, like, other people. You're not like, supposed to be responsible as yeah. a kid. You know, like, <laughs> people get, like, shot and stabbed randomly. You know, that's in, like, movies. And, like, you know, just, like, other people around the world. And, like, it's not real. Yeah. You know, because it's on, it's, it's on the news, but it's not here. Yeah, yeah, Bro, yeah. it's everywhere. It's everywhere. And, like, that's why it's, it's so, it's kind of scary, man. Yeah, it is pretty scary. But, um... On a topic of kids, like, do you see yourself with more like a son or a daughter? Um, I would. I, like I would. Have a um, son, bro. I would want to have both. Yeah. Um, I don't think I would settle for just one child. If I have one, no. I can't well, well, no, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying like, like what, like a girl dad, like a daddy's princess type, oh, shit, oh. or when you like. You want to raise a man like a gotcha. boy. Okay, honestly, I think I would, I would definitely raise a boy. You think? Yeah, that's what I yeah. see too. Cause it's like what's giving me right now is like king prince vibes with you. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's the only thing I think about. I'm just like, you're supposed to have a little prince. Yeah. I am James XBC <laughs> Sim- the second. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, you know I don't know, maybe I'll name my son James. Be like, you get it right this time. <laughs> You don't do what I did. <laughs> Join the dance crew. Brucial. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, no. I would... Oh, bro. I would, I would love to have a son. Oh, this... Dude, brucial? This... I don't know. Bro. Crucial with a K. Like, uh... I don't know. <laughs> brucial. I don't know. There's, hey, we don't mean anything by that. There's, there's, there's so much that I would love to teach my son. Yeah. I'm just like, oh, man, I'm going to make sure that you're so much better than me. For me, I feel like I'd be, like, I would have a daughter. I know you would, You bro. think I would? I Absolutely. You are, you are hands down, like, if I'm going to think of anyone who's going to be, like, like that, that's you. I can just see you just loving your daughter so much it's just like crazy because um <laughs> the, the way that i see you like around like jasper and stuff, i'm just like bro if you oh wait hold on uh, we ran out of uh do uh, okay but like the way that you like i throw like jasper and stuff, i'm like bro if you have a daughter it's gonna be like 
that, but like, uh, like no, you, I told Jasper I'd probably stop putting in time for her, <laughs> bro. Like no, like honestly, because I I just feel like you. I don't know. Honestly, I think you would be an amazing father. Yeah, and I just know that. I really appreciate like, that. Like, bro, your daughter, she she's gonna be very lucky to have you, man. Like, I'm gonna teach my daughter to be tough, bro. Bro, <laughs> like she's gonna be a tough Quack. kid. She's gonna be a cool. Can you imagine kid. a mini me? I actually can. That's reckless though, because I'm already a mini me. You're gonna be <laughs> a, a mini mini you, bro. A mini mini me. <laughs> but no, I feel like she's gonna be cool as hell. Like I'm sure she's probably gonna be hella talented. You know, she's gonna she's gonna have like she's gonna grow up in such a supported environment that like and like you're very intelligent. You know, like both of you guys are. I just feel like she's just gonna like. I just feel like she's going to be very successful. And it's just... I told Jasper, like, there's, like, there's, like, traits between her and I that we wish that would go on our kid, right? Mm -hmm. So it's, like, I hope that if we have a kid that they get her brains, but they get my, like, courage and, like, risk-taking, mm -hmm. you know? Because it's like, Jasper and I are both like kind of different in some ways. Or, or no, with her and I are totally different if you see us together. <laughs> you know, she's like the freaking brainiac. Like, she's smart. Like, Jasper's smart as <laughs> And I'm over here like, given, I may not know much, but I can tell you from experiences <laughs> through life that this will happen if you decide to do it. You know what I mean? So I feel like, I hope that with our kids, they get... If it was a girl, mm -hmm. they get her brains, they get, she gets my like risk taking vibe and like my um, more extroverted side of me. But I hope they get my height and not hers because <laughs> her family is tall. Jasper's tall. Oh, you don't, you don't want her to be tall? No, you know how hard it is to be a girl and tall and to find a man's? Uh. I don't think, <laughs> like, I think guys is really, like, the 5'2 the, the thing. Bro, Jasper and I are, like, damn near the same height. Bro, if you want a real king, get you a short king. No, oh, I'm a short king. Yeah. <laughs> yeah bro, like, how bro. tall are you? I'm, like, 5'7". Okay, I'm, like, 5'6". Yeah. Yeah, you're, like, an inch taller than yeah, you. Like, we shot these, bro. You shot these. Hey! So stupid, man. Um, what would you name your son? I actually, you know, you what? have names. I have one name. <laughs> I have one name. Mufasa. Um, I actually, um, Mufasa, <laughs> Mustafa. Um, I wanted to name my son Hero. Hero. Um, like not, Hero Thomas. Not H E R O, like mm. the hero, but H I R O. Isn't that an anime character? Is it? Yeah, because that's my, that's Jasper's sister's dog name, is Hiro. Really? Yeah, calls him hiro -chan. What? Yeah, it's like an anime character. Oh, I didn't even know that. From, I didn't from know. What show? That. I don't know. I don't watch anime as much as they do. But yeah. Um, but Hiro, Hiro, Hiro. Hiro sounds dope. Yeah, Hiro. But if, but if you say it, like, yeah, that sounds dope. Hiro, Hiro Akamizi. Akamizi. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> that's my boy! Yes. <laughs> Stop. That's stop. Hero, I could be easy. That may sound like a superhero. Oh, so now we, what happened? Oh, your battery. Oh, battery died. Okay, it's okay. The audio is still going. Um, it's going to be a long podcast. Bro, I know. Bro. We can talk for like hours. I feel like this is just us catching up though. Honestly though, but like, <laughs> isn't that so dope? So like, if you want to start a podcast, just start a podcast and just start talking, man. But yeah, man, like, Hero, if you're listening to this, Daddy loves you, man. I've always loved you. I loved you before you were born. <laughs> and Hiro, if I don't have you, then my dog, my <laughs> cat, you out there somewhere. I, I forgot that even when the camera dies, it's like we're still like live recording. No, we're still out here, bro. No, but that's crazy though. You will see a cat dancing again. <laughs> Another cat dancing. All right, we're we're live again. No, but that is crazy though. Like, oh, flip the camera. Oh yeah, my bad. Um, but yeah, man, Hiro, Hiro Akamizi. Hiro's dope. Yeah, man. So the one thing, um, Jasper and I, like, we really like, um, we really like the name for, if it was a girl, we would name him, like, uh, Kalani. 
Ooh. Kalani's pretty. Well, it's also like it's also kind of like an island name too, and I'm from I'm, I like the island names. Yeah. And then, but if it was another name, would be um, Evangeline. Evangeline. I like yeah, that one. because it's a because I want I wanted to be able to like if I had a kid, I want to sing them like a lullaby. So what I would do is like I would name her Evangeline, and then I would sing that song from Princess and the Frog. Remember the little firefly in Princess from the Frog? Look how she lights up the sky. My bell, Evangeline. I, uh, <laughs> I, I haven't watched. You that. haven't watched. You're black. <laughs> <laughs> you haven't watched Princess. But in the you're black. What? Find some time to watch it for you. You, got, you have to. Do yeah. you have Disney Plus? I think so, yeah. I have access yeah, to that. Yeah, you have Disney Plus and you're not a Disney person. You're ridiculous. I mean, it's not my account. It's someone's account. Oh, okay. I have someone's account. I have someone's account for everything. But yeah, no. I wanted to name her like Kalani or Evangeline. Mm -hmm. I had like this one name that I... Oh, but if we had a boy and it was like... um, I forgot. I forgot. But the definition of the name was like God is the way. God is the way. And then I think it was like Elias. Elias. Yeah, Elias. I think that was the name of like that I wanted to name our kid. Elias Servino. That would be pretty dope. Will they have middle names? I don't know. I don't know yet. Well, I mean, it's kind of like our thing. So what's your middle name? Chijoke. Chijoke. Mm -hmm. James Chijoke. Mm -hmm. James Chijoke. I came with you. <laughs> 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 Mine's Paolo. Paolo? Yeah, Paolo. Why do you say it like that? Paolo. Oh, no, no, no. Right? <laughs> Why did you say it? I didn't even say it any type of way, bro. <laughs> Paolo. Paolo. <laughs> yeah, no, like, you know, the sing to me Paolo type. Corpalo Sardino. Yeah. Like Taya, that. do you have a middle name? I like that. What is your middle name? What's your middle name? They're both Hawaiian. Ooh. It's Mihao Keo. You're Hawaiian as fuck. <laughs> I actually only knew like one or two. One or two Filipinos. Really? Yeah. No, but I feel like when you got to Virginia Beach, you like claimed Filipino. Like, like I feel like, like you're claimed. Filipino. Not really like <laughs> claimed. You're mine. <laughs> you're all mine. <laughs> Make me money. <laughs> 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 no, but I feel like I don't know. It's like I feel like you were exposed to like a lot of Filipino people here. I mean, it's because of the dance world, man. Yeah, like, man. It's like you guys that's are all where, dancers and singers. All, like all Filipinos are like dancers and singers yeah. in some way. But it's like I feel like you're the only black person that eats a Jollibee, dude. Bro, Jollibee is crack. Other than Eric, I don't crack. <laughs> Jollibee is crack. Oh, I love, oh, man. If I really another time, I'll get Jollibee. Wait, we'll, they we'll close like, What time are they close? What time is it right now? It's already nine. I think they cl they closed already. Or no, I think I think John will be close at eleven. Hold on. If, if they close at eleven, that oh, it's They're been twenty four hours. Oh yeah, it has. Do you want some pasta? <sighs> kind of yeah, but later, later. Okay, I'll take a little bit just for the road so I don't die. Okay, okay, okay. But yeah, no, it's like I feel like you were just exposed to a lot of like Filipino culture here in Virginia Beach. No, I have, I've, I've, uh, I have dabbled in Filipino culture, but I, I love it. I love it. You guys have amazing food. Amazing people. That's always a food. The food's amazing. It's always a food that gets you. I don't know. Then again, I'm also a fat. I just love food in general. Have you ever eaten at a, <clears throat> it's not a Filipino place, but it's like. Philly? No, no, I'm, yeah. But I'm talking about like Islander food. Mm, I don't know. Have you ever had like, well, of course you've had Spam Masubi. <clears throat> yeah, of course. I make that. Uh, you know how to make Spam Masubi? Yeah, of course. Probably not as good as mine. Shit, you wanna? Dude, we can have a spam and contest. We're gonna have a spam and right contest. All I right. still have one waiting. Really? Yeah, with Taya. <laughs> All right, well, it's her. I've heard of it now. I've had a few clients from Guam now. Yeah. And they've all told me that it's like big over there, so I'm like, I don't know if I should try it. Now I'm a little intimidated. Spam masubi is spam masubi is our. Do you have with the egg? Huh? Then you have different flavors. Oh yeah, no, we have like we even have like salmon masubi. Like we know how to make yeah, salmon masubi. Salmon masubi. Oh yeah, there's no like you can't go to like a Guam convenience store without them having like a spam masubi heater inside their stores. Like mm. 
they have like this what is it I, I don't see I don't, I don't know what really call it but um it's yep. like you put food in the fucking heater and then just to make sure it stays hot so you open it up grab some spam masubi and walk out like That's we're dope. like bro spam masubis are shit. given i forgot so jasper had to like Remind me of like what to put in the sauce, but then I kind of like remembered how to do it, so mm -hmm. I was like, oh, okay, now. And it even helps that she bought like whenever Jasper went to Hawaii for, uh, what is it? She went to Hawaii for um, it was like a college graduation present from her parents. Mm -hmm. She got a spam masubi maker. Oh yeah. Yeah. Was it like a? Yeah. Is it like a the? It's like no, a, it's like a glass. Like, like yeah, yeah, like a, like a glass of. Well, it's not glass. It's like plastic. Plastic, like, square thing. And you, like, have you press thing, down. You press it down. Yeah. yeah, you press it down at the I top. I used to have that, too. But, I mean, like, you can't you can't say that you make, like, real Spam Masubi if you don't know how to make it from the Spam can. If you don't know how to make it from the Spam can. Do you know how to make Spam Masubi out of the Spam can? Like. Like, okay, so how I used to do it, bef how we used to do it before the Spam Masubi maker was that we put a Ziploc inside of the spam can. Oh, I thought you meant like... And the spam like, can shapes it into mm -hmm. the spam masubi. You can even use the spam can to like yeah. shape the egg and stuff too. If you want yeah, to add egg but it's like we put it, <clears throat> we put in the rice inside of the Ziploc and then we put in the spam masubi on top of it and it shapes it into like a spam so that it can fit and then we put that on top of the sushi or like the <laughs> sushi roll. And then, um, <clears throat> yeah, it's basically how we make it like even without the spam masubi maker. I thought you were asking me if I knew how to like make, you know, spam fresh, like not canned spam. I was like, oh no, what the fuck? Yeah, that's, that's when I was like, am I learning something new today? No, no, like, it's like <laughs> if you don't have a spam masubi maker, you can still make spam masubi with the can. Mm -hmm. Have you done that? Yeah. Oh, okay. Just making sure. I mean, I've, I've, I've. You been, think you make pretty boss spam masubi, don't you? I think I make okay. I'm not gonna like, you know, claim anything like that, but like I've. How long do you marinate your spam for in the sauce? I don't want to answer that. No, let me know. Let me know. No, I don't want to answer that. Next question. I should marinate for the whole day. Next question. But you know what? Have you visited islands? No, I haven't. Damn, dude. I would love to. You're missing out. I know I am. Dude, I got to take you to Guam with me one day. Take me. Guam is Take me now. I'm ready. Passport's like in my bag. Let's go. No, but it's like, it's so easy though, because like whenever I was living on Guam, it was literally like. It only takes you like 45 minutes to get from one end of the island to the other. Oh, wow. Really? That's how small it is. Like I think, yeah, I think it's like only like a hundred, it's only like a hundred and some mile radius. Whoa. That's, yeah. That is a small. And it's island. not even that big because the bases at each end of the island make the island smaller actually because they take up like the military takes mm -hmm. up a whole lot more bases on Guam. So it's like north of the island is Anderson Air Force Base and then south of the island is... Um, South of the island is the big navy. We call it big navy, but it's the big navy base south of the island. And in the middle of the island is an army slash national guard base. Hmm. So it's like <clears throat> Guam is a very like military, like it's a military base. That's basically what it is. But then it's like it's only because America like took it over. But other than that, it's like Damn it's Americans. such a small, it's such a small island, dude. Like you can, like I used to. It, my my school and my house was actually pretty far from each other, mm -hmm. but then it's like, it's very like you can ride a bike from your house to school. Like it's really not that far. Well, I didn't realize how small Guam. Yeah, was. Guam is pretty small. That's why it's like, that's why it, <laughs> when you were on Guam, you had to be careful. Because you know everyone. Well, it's not just that. It's like when you live in a small island, there's like no privacy. Okay. Like everybody knows everybody on the island, so it's like Gossip. it's very hard. That people talk like especially like because we have like these things called like fiestas and stuff, mm -hmm. and it's like when all the and, like, whenever your relatives and people from the islands like get together, and dude, everybody on the island just loves to gossip about people. So it's like if you, you got to be careful who you put your information out to on the island because that shit will spread like wildfire. Real people love gossip. That's what I had to learn because like holy shit, dude, like my shit got blown out of proportion. Mm -hmm. Like my goodness, everyone on the fucking island knew. But then you also have to be careful, too, because you don't know if you're flirting with your cousin or not. Mm -hmm. Why are you going? I don't know. Your hand was there. And I, I, I was just trying to. Okay. Know. I like it, though. <laughs> <laughs> it was there. I was like, you know, <laughs> now my shot. No, but. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not throwing away my shot. <laughs> but, yeah, no, it's like. And, um, it's like Guam was super small. But it's fun, though. 
But the thing that I tell people on Guam is that, dude, did I get cut by something? Oh my gosh, look at that. What is that? I think I got cut by a knife cut? or something. No, I think it's a oh. knife. Oh, you're not bleeding, though. I know, I think I got it earlier. Oh. No, but uh, what is it? It was like, um, what was it? Guam is just super small, and it's very hard to have. That's the one thing I didn't like about the island is that there was barely any, like, privacy. There was, like, no privacy on Guam. Wow, whatsoever. the card is full. What? Oh, wow. Um... Have we been talking for that long? We've been talking for that long. <laughs> okay. Um, I don't have another SD card on me. Okay, well, I guess that's it. <laughs> uh, well, guys, okay, well, the audio's still going. Um, the audio's still going. I'm going to have a video of something going on. <laughs> something weird. Something really weird. Put something really weird on there, James. Oh, wait, no, you should. <clears> you know what you should do? You should do like what those Asian movies do to where it's like, you know, they're mouthing the words, but then the, the right words aren't coming out of their mouth. Oh, it's like you should just do another <laughs> clip of us like talking, but then the audio just does not go with it. That would be awkward, but yeah, I'll <laughs> throw it in there, James. <laughs> no, but uh, yeah, man, like that's what Guam is like. But I mean, <clears throat> damn, dude, we talked a lot on this podcast. No, oh, I think we hit a lot of like, a, we had a lot of things. Yeah. Yeah. But I feel like it's just like, I think this was like a random episode. But that's awesome, though. You know? Yeah, like it was, we just talked about like whatever. Like we just did not give a shit. <laughs> I think it was fun. Like, we talked about, you know, our pet peeves and what pissed us off, and they led to us talking about our... Kids. Our kids, <laughs> our love languages. Yeah, and bro. Guam like, and we can... with soup. Are you wearing a day change chain? Oh, no, I'm not. Oh, okay. No, no, no that's your tooth chain. Yeah. Yeah, but dude, man, like, this podcast <clears throat> is pretty fun. Yeah, I'm no, not gonna I, lie to you. I'm I, so glad that we started this, man. I can see us doing this. Yeah, dude. Like for a, like, we can have a lot of episodes. Bro, for really though. Dude, but yeah, man. We just wanna, like I said, like we say every episode, we just wanna thank you guys for your constant support and just listening to us like talk about our random things when you can totally be doing something more enjoyable to your day. But instead, you're sitting there like an idiot listening to us, <laughs> like a dumb idiot. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, we love and support you guys. We thank you guys for so much for like listening in and um, uh, yeah. Yeah, we love you. Yeah, thank you, you guys so man. much for. Uh, tuning in for another episode of uh, I almost said cheesy matches. <laughs> another episode of different Black. platform. I know, I know. <laughs> this is our thing, right. not you and Steve. <laughs> it's, it's habit. It's habit. <laughs> um, but yeah, man. Uh, hope you guys have an amazing day. Uh, drink water. Love you guys, and uh, be kind to each other. You know? Be kind to each other, man. Love each other and cherish your time with each other, man. Exactly. And treat your kids right. Yeah. Don't. Don't be. You know. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Stay blessed, y'all.